In addition to making money, entrepreneurs of big businesses in China have dreams too. The Ocean Flower Island project is the brainchild of the founder of Evergrande Group, Zhu Jiayin. It's said to be the world's largest artificial island. Unfortunately, the 39 residential towers on the island have recently been ordered to be demolished. The significance of this matter goes beyond the buildings themselves. China Evergrande Group has invested more than 24 billion U.S. dollars over 12 years to complete this project. According to the promotional materials, Evergrande compares this artificial island complex to Dubai's Palm Jumeirah. It's said that Zhu Jiayin conceived the prototype of the island project on the first day of the Lunar New Year in 2012. He was sleepless that night and became inspired when collecting leaves, flowers, and other materials while looking into the sea time and again. The Ocean Flower Island consists of three separate artificial islands, namely Island One, Two, and Three. Island One is mainly for commercial facilities such as hotels, amusement parks, and retail streets, while Island Two and Three are mainly for residential use. It includes a convention center of approximately 1.1 million square feet, a complex that showcases peonies in full bloom, which symbolizes wealth and prosperity, the most favored kind of flower by Chinese people. In August 2013, a Chinese magazine, Outlook Weekly, wrote that Zhu took a private jet to Danzhou City and told the local officials that he would devote the rest of his life to the city. Since then, Ocean Flower Island has been featured prominently in the Chinese media, including on national television. It started the trial operation almost a year ago. In winter, snowbirds from all over China go to Hainan to escape the cold, and Ocean Flower Island is one of their destinations. Usually, it's the busiest season in Ocean Flower Island around New Year's Day. Yet this year, Evergrande got a sudden notice from the government. On December 30th, 2021, the Danzhou Municipal Authority issued an administrative order stating that the planning permission obtained illegally for the project of 39 towers on Island Number Two had been revoked, and they were to be demolished within 10 days. It said Evergrande can apply for administrative review within 60 days. These towers aren't unfinished projects, but rather completed developments that have already been sold. I feel a bit pity. It is still a pity. So much money was spent, such a waste of manpower and resources. They are all completely finished. It's a pity they have to be demolished. The government could have saved it for some other use. I saw a lot of people here. All of them were saying that they don't want it demolished. It can be left for some other use. This isn't the first time that Ocean Flower Island has been told to demolish the constructed works. The turning point for the island project occurred between 2017 and 2020. The project started in 2010 when the then Danzhou Municipal Government signed a development agreement with Evergrande Group. After which, the State Oceanic Administration organized experts to evaluate the project. The construction of Ocean Flower Island was actually illegal from the very beginning. According to Chinese law, the sea area of local projects shouldn't exceed 27 hectares. If the size exceeds 27 hectares, it needs to be reported to the provincial government and the state council for approval. However, Evergrande Group was able to obtain an amazing result of over 783 hectares of land reclamation. How did it manage to do so? Local officials applied a special method to approve the project. They split the reclamation project into 36 subprojects of less than 27 hectares. They approved 18 subprojects in one day on January 21, 2013, and another 18 subprojects in one day on July 4 of the same year. It was the local government officials who helped Chu Jiayin realize his dream by breaking the entire project into piecemeal fashion. At that time, the director of the Danzhou City Bureau of Ocean and Fisheries told the media, "As a key project in Hainan Province, Ocean Flower Island has received approval from the national level for the use of the waters, and there is no problem with the procedures." 
During the period from 2016 to 2020, also known as the 13th Five-Year Plan of the Chinese Communist Party, Ocean Flower Island remained a key project promoted by Hainan provincial authorities. In 2017, an environmental protection inspector from the central government visited Hainan province and found that the coastal cities and counties were filling up the sea to create land and eroding the coastline for property development, greatly damaging the local ecological environment. The inspection team found several illegal artificial island projects in Hainan and Ocean Flower Island was among them. The Ocean Flower Island was described as a project that bulged the money bag and ruined the ecology and its construction has caused the destruction of large coral reefs and white butterfly shells. Hainan province was asked to rectify the situation and perform ecological restoration. According to a 2017 report by China's Taishin Weekly, the Evergrande Group had started the reclamation project before obtaining permission for the right to use the sea. It didn't receive the license number and certificate of sea area use until March and August 2013 respectively. However, local residents said that they had witnessed the project of Ocean Flower Island starting to dump rocks for reclamation as early as 2012. Evergrande was quite wealthy at the time. It was able to take care of the crisis easily by paying a fine of about 34.4 million US dollars and then proceeded with construction. In August 2020, the CCP imposed three red lines to tighten the financing regulation in the real estate industry. Subsequently, Evergrande Group experienced a massive debt crisis. In other words, 2020 was the year when Evergrande's real bad luck started. On October 24, 2020, China's Ministry of Ecology and Environment published the second round of Ecological Protection Rectification Program of Hainan Province. According to this program, illegal and irregular construction projects within the sea area of the Ocean Flower Island project should be stopped and rectification should be put in place before resuming work. However, Ocean Flower Island Corporation failed to follow the requests. It built four culvert bridges illegally as of July 2019 and formed an illegal sea enclosure of about 369 hectares. The rectification program from the central government also criticized the Danzhou municipal government, saying, Although it punished Evergrande's illegal acts such as building before receiving approval between 2017 and 2018, the city indulged the company to continue construction. Moreover, Ocean Flower Island Corporation used the land intended for tourism infrastructure for real estate development. For this issue, Hainan province had requested Danzhou city to restructure and optimize the construction program. However, up to the time of the inspection and without obtaining any permit, Evergrande continued to build 39 new residential towers on Ocean Flower Island in 2018. The ecological and environmental departments of Danjo City even provided retroactive environmental assessment procedures for it. The rectification program has requested to remove four culvert bridges, restore the properties of the open sea, legally dispose of the 39 residential buildings, regulate and implement ecological restoration, and eliminate the island's safety hazards. In the following month, culvert bridge number three and number four of the Ocean Flower Island project were demolished. Danjo Municipality also closed the online application related to the sale of the 39 residential towers. Ocean Flower Island Corporation terminated the purchase agreement of 328 units with all homeowners and refunded them. Evergrande Group said that after reclaiming the 39 residential towers, all of them would be converted for self-use and their selling was strictly forbidden. Evergrande has formulated a plan for the subsequent management of the 39 buildings including four modes of transforming them to hotel operation, office leasing, quarters for employees, and residence for talents. Meanwhile, Danjo Municipal Government, in the face of the demands from Hainan Province and the Central Marine Management Department, also stated that it has set up a special account for the ecological restoration, completed the audit of the restoration budget, and launched the ecological restoration work. It has identified the bidding agent and is conducting the preliminary work for a quote. 
Thus, the decision to demolish the 39 towers on the island seems to have come as a bit of a surprise. During the demolition fiasco of Ocean Flower Island, China Evergrande Group also filed for suspension of trading. After the resumption of trading in the afternoon of January 4, 2022, Evergrande issued an announcement explaining the situation of Ocean Flower Island and revealed the latest sales figures. According to the announcement, Evergrande achieved contracted sales of approximately U.S. $69.5 billion in 2021. Regarding its current liquidity situation, the Evergrande Group said it would continue to actively maintain communication with its creditors and make efforts to resolve the risks and safeguard the legitimate rights and interests of all parties. It seems the Evergrande Group is trying to be optimistic, but the demolition order is likely to have dampened a group of investors who are well aware of Chinese politics. If we examine the rise and fall of officials within the CCP, we can get some of its hidden messages. On December 3, 2020, a high-ranking official from Hainan province was sentenced to life imprisonment and all his personal property was confiscated by a court in Guangzhou for taking bribes. The official notice stated that during his tenure in several cities in Hainan province, Zhang Qi provided assistance to related individuals and units in matters such as land development, project contracting, and project promotion, and illegally received gifts from others directly or through specific individuals, amounting to approximately 17.12 million U.S. dollars. Subsequently, Chinese media outlets revealed that Zhang Qi was the mayor of Danzhou City in 2008 and served as the party secretary of Danzhou City from 2010 to 2014. It was during his tenure as party secretary that he illegally promoted the Ocean Flower Island project involving a total reclamation land area of 783 hectares. The report continues. Between 2010 and 2018, Zhang Qi helped a number of private business owners illegally acquire over 460 hectares of land in several cities such as Danzhou, Sanya, and Haikou. Among them, he assisted the real estate developer in setting exclusive bidding conditions in violation of the law, acquiring more than 66 hectares of land illegally, encroaching on geological parks and ecological forest land, and causing billions of RMB in losses to the country. Meanwhile, a publication named China Discipline Inspection and Supervision News criticized Zhang, saying that Hainan province, a province where land resources are very scarce and marine resources are very precious, he had created land reclamation and illegal development, turning land resources into a pie to slice and dice and a tool to make money. It was a typical case of making money from an island. Zhang Qi had been an official in Hainan for more than 30 years. Isn't it incredible that it took decades for the CCP's disciplinary and marine management departments to discover the corruption and the environmental damage caused by high-profile, large-scale land reclamation projects? The truth is, the CCP only cracks down on corrupt officials in a targeted manner. For Chinese bureaucrats, what worries them most isn't corruption per se, but the change of power within the CCP and whether their backers are still in power. If their backers lose their power, it means their good days are likely to have come to an end. Viewing from this angle, the Evergrande crisis takes on a different meaning. When Evergrande Group started out, it didn't have its roots in Xi Jinping's faction in the top echelons of the Communist Party. It means it has now lost its roots. Some of its backers in the top echelons of the CCP have either stepped down or been sent to jail. It can no longer solve problems by spending money, not to mention it doesn't have much money anymore. Plus, in those years, when Evergrande had money and backers, it might have offended some people and the current situation would be an opportunity for revenge. Every year, China's architecture free speech will invite scholars to rank the top 10 ugliest buildings in China. On December 19, 2021, Evergrande's Ocean Flower Island Complex was announced to be the number one ugliest building in China in 2021. The judges cited the Ocean Flower Island was odd and chaotic, a typical example of capital's willful behavior showing off wealth and a brazen cultural tourism project. However, it's hard to say how credible such an assessment is. The so-called experts in media in China may be just a little more brave in criticizing officials and enterprises that have lost their power. As for Evergrande, the current demolition order will be far from the end for the Ocean Flower Island.